Well, I appreciate you clicking on the video. This is Fish Hunt Cook Tinker. And on this channel, I literally do pretty much everything. Anything outside, hunting, fishing, and working on boats. So we're just coming off, we're still working on trying to get the skiff done. And if you haven't checked those videos out, please do. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. This is a video I've been wanting to try to do for a while. And I just kind of wanted to see if there was any interest out there for, you know, sharing my little bit of knowledge on how to tie rigs and you know rigging for fishing for different types of species and you know I don't really know if there's much interest but it's something I love to do I love to show people stuff that I know and what little bit I do and it's just fun for me I like teaching people and just sharing what I do know helping somebody out and you know I just wanted to see if there was any interest in these videos and I could do you know, there's tons of rigs that I use fishing throughout the years and I could you know do quite a few videos with different how to's and what I do and just kind of how I rig my stuff and you know I don't know if there's a lot of people out there that know a lot more than me I don't get to fish anywhere near as much as I would like to anymore you know life's crazy and it's hard to get to the beach we're about four hours away so for me it's it's not quite as easy to get there and do what I like to, but you know we still try to do it as much as we can. But anymore, it's just been work and everything's been crazy. But let's go ahead and get started, and I'll show you what I'm going to do today is a surf drum rig, and also I wanted to tie in a grouper rig with it as well because pretty much it's kind of the same rig. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this is one that I pulled out that I'd already tied up for a headboat trip for a grouper rig. And all it is is a Gamagatsu, well, this may be an owner, let's see. Uh, this is Gamagatsu Adol Octopus Circle Hook. And snailed with, this one's a little short, it's only about four feet of 130 pound test, going to a, I can't remember the weight rating on this swivel, but they're about 230 pounds, I believe. And this one's a little bit overkill, but I found them at a good price and you're not gonna break it. So, but this is the basic grouper rig. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to tie this one. All right, so we've got our octopus circle hook here. And this is an Adolf, which is normally, I, I like owner better. And I've had Gamagatsu straighten out quite a bit. So I always try to use owner, but I believe this one's a Gamagatsu. So I'm gonna use, just so hopefully you can see it, I'm gonna use this 200 pound braid and hopefully you'll be able to actually see what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is it's important the way that your line goes in. So I'm gonna go ahead, your line goes in the eye from this direction. That way when it's snailed, it's pulling the shaft of the hook straight and you're not cocking it this way or that way. So we're gonna go ahead, go through the eye, pull out about a foot or so. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pinch right here at the base. I'm gonna bring the tag end up and then I'm gonna pinch. This is kind of hard to do, it takes a little practice. I'm gonna leave this little loop under the shaft of the hook and then I'm gonna move and pinch up here. So now, I'm going to wrap this tag back over itself, going down the shank of the hook, kind of pinching as I go. And I'm just gonna keep wrapping it back over itself, like so. I hope this is focusing. So I'm gonna keep wrapping it back over itself, working this way. And I'm gonna do about eight twists. So now I'm gonna move my other hand up here, pinch right here, and I'm gonna just keep working it back. So I think that's actually nine, but I wanna make it big and bulky so you can see it. And now I'm gonna go back through this tag end, or through my loop, I'm gonna take it back through the loop, like so. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So you've got to pull kind of both ends, keep a little tension on the back end and as you're pulling. And now what I'm gonna do is hold it right here 
I let go of the main line and I'm gonna pull the back tag and I'm just gonna kind of work it back and forth and what I like to do I like to leave it quite a bit so I can wrap that around my hand and wrap this and I'm gonna pull really tight because you gotta get it tight because if you do not if you don't pull tight on it up here right up here towards the eye of the hook if you don't get that first couple loops tight what it's gonna do is slip over the eye of the hook but once you get this thing cinched down you're not gonna break it so as long as there's no chafes you don't have a cheap hook and there's no chafes right in here you're not gonna break the line your line is gonna break up in here due to chafing before it will ever break here so that's it and all I'm gonna do is trim it down so there's our snail and now depending for the grouper rig it all depends on what boat you're fishing off of pretty much so for me I have not made the investment yet for a offshore boat maybe one day I hope but for me mostly we fish off charter boats and head boats for charter boats you can get away with a little bit longer leader because there's not as many people you know you've only got a six pack so but for head boats anytime I've ever went longer than about six feet it always turns into a mess so I try to always keep my group of rigs around six feet if I'm fishing off a head boat so we're gonna go ahead stretch out I'll probably do a little less on this one. I'll do about four or five and that's probably more where I keep them is about four or five just because you know you got so many people on the back of head boats and you get a bunch of line out and it just turns into a mess that's just my preference but you can do whatever you want so now I've got our swivel we're just gonna go through the eye of the swivel and this is a, I'm gonna show you a mono knot because you're not gonna use braid for your leaders you're gonna use for a grouper rig I like 100 preferably 130 pound mono so I'm going to go through the eye of the swivel come back I'm going to pinch it and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to work back and I'm going to make two twists. Two is really all you need. If you want to make it stronger, you do four. But two for a 130 pound test, you're not ever going to break it. And then I go back through the loop and then I'm just going to cinch it down. And for mono, I'm gonna you know wet it down with some saliva or something, and then just pull it tight. And that knot right there is has never failed me. If you do two loops, I believe it's called a figure eight. If you do more than that, I don't know what it's called. It's pretty much the same thing as a figure eight knot with more twists. And my dad taught me that knot when I was like 10 years old, and I've used that knot all my life. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the swivel off. You've seen how we snail the hook, right? So for the drum rig, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We've snailed the hook, but for a surf drum rig, you want it short. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip it off. And for a surf rig, you would not ever use a swivel that big probably about half that size so we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna go back through the eye and we're gonna keep it kind of short and for mono all you need is two loops so you're gonna go pinch down you're gonna wrap around one two times and then you're gonna pull it tight and this one's actually gonna end up that's about right that's a touch on the long side, but that's probably about what I always use for drum. About six, eight inches is all you need. And the reason being is when you're fishing off the surf, you're trying to throw as far as you can. You're trying to get out past the breakers or out on the bar and, or trying to clear the bar. You want to try to keep this thing as compact as possible. If you go another eight inches longer, six inches longer, it's going to spin like crazy as you're throwing it and it's going to kill your distance. So that's why you keep your drum rigs nice and short. And for drum rigs, 100 pound test, that's my go-to, it's mono. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this up. And now, on your drum rod, you're gonna have a 50 pound shock leader, which is, if you don't know what that is, that's enough to get a couple wraps on the reel and then go all the way through the rod and then down about four, five, three, four feet, however close you wanna keep it to the tip. But it's a 50 pound test that is pretty much absorbing the shock of you casting. So how I rig it, I like to use, I don't normally use these. I found this setting out and had it, so I grabbed it. This is a, I can't remember, I think fish finder rig or something. It's a sinker slider, and they think these things are pretty much made of gold, so I don't normally use them. But I use just a little snap swivel, and that's always worked for me. But these things are really better because they don't, you could use these for a week on end and it would never hurt your line. So I'm gonna go ahead and, yeah, my main issue with these is if you don't use beads with them, they'll normally go over your knots. And you want it to stop at your shock leader knot because it'll go, you get a big shark or a big fish, it'll go, I've had them go 100 yards up your line. So what I like to do, this is, again, I'm just using this braid so you can see it, but this is the 50 pound test that is gonna be your shock leader. And I'm gonna take one of these little clear beads with the small holes so it can't go over my shock leader knot. And I'm gonna put one in front. I'm gonna put the snap. And then I'm gonna use one of the, let me get you to see it, the bigger hold beads, one of the bigger beads that have the larger hole so it fits over the knot and it's not beating the knot up. If you use the smaller hole, it's still gonna beat the knot up. So I'll use one or two of those and then to attach it to my main line, I'm gonna go or attach my shock leader to my swivel. I'm gonna go same knot, figure eight knot, but with about six to eight twists. So we're gonna pinch it right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's only because we're using a 50 pound test. So back through the loop, pull it tight. And there we go. All right, so there's our rig. And we've got the bead up front to keep it from going past the shock leader. And then we've got a large bead with a large diameter hole to pretty much protect our knot and that's all that's doing. So I, you don't have to use the beads, it's just my preference because a lot of times when we go down fishing, we'll fish all week. And if I do it this way and it's kind of slow, we're not catching a lot of fish, and this I can use this all week long and never have any issues because of the beads. And if this is constantly beating on your knots after a week of fishing at the beach, it's gonna, it'll fray it off and you'll have to retie a couple times. So this is the 10 ounce sinker I made, which is really way too heavy for what you'd be trying to cast. But, so you're just gonna attach your sinker on there, like so, and there's your drum rig, you're ready to go. All right, so now for the grouper rig, I'm just gonna use the same drum rig because it's the same as, let's just pretend this is about six feet long. So. What we're gonna do is pretty much the exact same thing we just did, but with a different sinker type. So we're gonna take our small diameter bead and we're gonna put it on the line. And that's, there's no knot really, cause you're gonna tie to main line, which is, I normally use 50 pound test mono. But that just kinda helps to keep it from going up. I don't know, you don't really need one on the top, but I always put one. I can't really justify the reasons why. So we're gonna do that. And this all depends on the current. And you can use from a six to up to a, I don't know what this one is, it's so old and used I can't read it, up to a 16. Pretty much is about the biggest I've ever used. And that's only when the current is just ripping. You want just enough weight to get it down, have a little bit of an angle out 
but you want to keep it pretty straight down just depending upon where the boat's anchored really on the wreck or the reef so we're going to use an eight for this scenario because that's normally my go-to on medium to light current so we got the bead on there we're going to go ahead run the line through the egg sinker and i'm going to put my large diameter bead on and then now we're going to use the exact same knot so we're going to loop it back and we're going to do six twists and six is really overkill because for 50 pound tests you could really get away with two but i always overdo it and i do six just to be safe you got that 30 pound grouper on you don't want it to break so there we go trim that up and there's your grouper rig but with six foot a liter but you can also i mean you can go up i mean i've seen people use 20 foot a liter and then you've got a hand line to fish in but with six feet off a headboat 20 feet you're gonna have a mess so that's where i keep it to fish off headboats well that's pretty much it i mean that is a basic grouper and surf drum rig because you know that's what i've used all my life all over north carolina and you know it's worked very well for me so i'm sure while i'm editing this i'll be thinking of something else i forgot to add and i'll try to write that in and little pop-ups but uh I hope everybody liked the video. I hope this helps somebody that is trying to learn about different rigs they can use. And, you know, this is pretty much a basic rig for anywhere in the world. I mean, you can use this to catch just about anything. Surf, offshore, whatever. So, I hope everybody enjoys the video. And I'm trying to film in 4K. I've never done that before. So, it's going to be a new experience for me. And I hope you like this kind of video. If you do, leave me a comment. Let me know. Uh... I use quite a few different rigs over the years and I've learned quite a few different knots. I'm no expert, but you know, I'll tell everybody what I know and try to help out anyone that I can. So I appreciate everybody watching and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do check out all the other videos. We've got tractors, fishing, hunting, working on stuff, tinkering, everything. So thanks again. Please subscribe, leave a thumbs up and we'll see you next time.